So let's get started, actually, just because I think this will probably be a quick meeting. Um, uh, as mentioned, Diane is not here today. Um, in terms of the current agenda, is there anything I've missed, either current items or new business? Um, There's, I think what might be useful is just putting, like we do the main meeting, review mm -hmm. the issues and um, pull requests. Because right. I think we're now saying that that's part of this meeting. You, to yeah, we do are, any, actually. Yeah. yeah. Pull requests and then new business. Uh, okay, so and don't forget to put your name in the attendance part of the document. That way we know who was here and we have to um, reach out to someone if they missed something um, and put your affiliation. That always helps. Okay. Um, Uh, let's see, charter update and placement. There's no update on that. I do actually, I did open an issue, um, but no update on that. Uh, beta site, uh, Brian, any updates in general? Um, other than it's no longer beta. Uh, it's <laughs> right. it's um, running as normal. Um, from last docs meeting, I have added the section on how to actually create new content. We've got three sections there. We've got one if you want to install the stuff locally, one if you want to use Podman or Docker, and then the other one if you wanted to use InCluster with Che. I've added the dev file to the repo. And so any feedback on that will be greatly appreciated. Um, I also noticed that in the working group session, I missed the main working group. I put all the sub working groups, but I actually hadn't put anything about the main working group. So I, I changed <laughs> that. Um, and obviously the two links in the bottom, the GitHub now goes to the OKD, OpenShift OKD main repo instead of the, the commons. And with the new Twitter handle, that's now in the bottom comment as well. But the Facebook sort of goes to the OpenShift Facebook. So they're the changes since the last docs meeting. But as I say, it's now business as usual, I think, moving forward, which no longer beta, we're, we're, we're live, we're, um, no one screamed that it's terrible and we should revert it back or anything like that. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm calling it done. This is closed. It's, it's now production. All right. Excellent. Thank you for all of your work. Any questions from anyone on website stuff? Well, then let's move on to uh, uh, name and scope of install and README. I haven't done anything on that. Brian broke up a lot of that and put that in, but um, now we just need to, to rework those actual files in the, in the, the code repo or the, the OKD repo. Yeah, I was, was going to ask, yeah, so ask, how do we want to organize that? Because what a lot of, and community sites have is they have, if you want to use it, there's one section, which we're more or less catered for, but are there different use cases for technical information in terms of if you want to learn how to customize a build, if you want to extend and add new capability? And I'm just thinking, how do we want to do that? Because I think some of the information in there will fall into that sub subgrouping or subcategorization of information. So it might be worth just thinking about right. how we yeah. want to organize documentation generally for the, I want to do more than use OKD. I want to be able to get under the covers and do stuff. Yeah. And I think that this is a conversation we might want to loop the demon for some of. Definitely. My sense is that the, the readme on the OKD repo um, should just be, this is how to file an issue. This is what you should do if you have an issue. This is what you should do if you want to talk about something, like breaking down the, the 
issues and discussions section of that repo for actual code-related stuff. I think modifications should go on the website, how to do modifications and do... I do, but at the minute, he's got some information about, like, how the build is constructed and things like that. I think we want that in technical documentation. Yeah. Yeah. I I think at the end of it, it comes to what is the purpose of that repo? Yeah, and I mean, so if we look at this here, let me bring it up actually real quick. And I agree some of that needs to come into the website, but it's then how do we organize it in the website to make it useful and... So, yeah, let me share my screen here real quick and let's talk about this for a second. And, okay, so this is it, folks can see. I think you're on the wrong screen. Uh, what are you seeing right now? I see a window with downloads in it. Oh, hold on, let me see here. There we go. Okay. That's it. All right, so, um, yeah, I mean, at this point, the repo is becoming, you know, so let's look at the, the readme. So if we look at the readme, there's this explanation of what it is, right? Um, a sentence about the working group, and then but, but I mean, if, getting... if you look at the getting started, it tells you how to extract 4.5. R- right, exactly. Um, and And we can... I feel like getting started, having a getting started in the repo file, the repo readme makes sense because there are some folks who go directly to repos for open source projects. But, but projects what getting like started do you want? Is it a, a, a UPI, an IPI, what platform? Getting started is such a complex, there is yeah. no getting started, one line right. command. Um, um, the, the obvious one would be to put CRC there. If that would, if you wanted something really simple, you could run on your laptop. That is yeah. the only experience you can. But I think, as we agree in the main meeting, no one's really using CRC that we can tell, because it requires yeah. a beast of a laptop underneath it. Right. Well, the, yeah. The and I mean, step, and if you the look first at step the, is getting oh, through through gig. I was going to say the first step of using CRC on your laptop is to. Uh, get 32 gigabytes of uh, memory. Download, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, so I, th- I feel like the, this info about the installer and stuff like that, um, it starts out in one place and then it, it, this whole, and then it sort of ends up in another, it kind of meanders. Yeah. And, and, there's and no one start... that's going to be able to just install a cluster without no. what infrastructure, what, you know. Yeah, so, I mean, and the other thing, and to start talking about nightlies, if you're new to the project, to start talking about nightlies and pruning in 72 hours, it's a bit like, uh, w- right. which way is up? <laughs> I don't even know what OKD right. is yet. You're already telling me how right. to do nightlies. And... Right. Well, in, in a way, I mean, like, okay, so I think that, that this is probably a legacy from uh, 3.x, mm-hmm. you know, sort of evolving from that, okay. Um, and in a way, whatever we're going to do now, it might be an interim step because um, it would sort of be useful to do what we were talking about in the other meeting, which is get to a, a sort of an OC cluster up type capability, right. yeah. um, which basically means uh, you know stripping out uh, you know metrics and uh, you know you know basically stripping out all the stuff that makes uh, OKD useful in production, yeah. So that people almost, can sort of tr- try it out and get and get a uh, console. Yeah, we, we almost want a mini shift uh, experience or a or a um, kind or a mini cube, where it's right. quick and easy to go. I mean, to me, I would say 
this should be a general introduction of the, the, the sort of standard paragraph, OKD is a community driven version of OpenShift. And then it should point to the website. I mean, to me, it's let's have the information in one place and maintain it right. once. Mm -hmm. So, but then the question, yeah. but then the question is, what what does this this repo serves as a? a I mean, home? to me, the, the, this repo is our planning repo for issues and discussions surrounding the code itself, the surrounding. OKD itself, the, the I mean, yes, the, there's almost no code in there's no code right. in this. Yeah, there really isn't. It, there's some scripts, I think, in the guides that I put in, but other than that, there's nothing. But again, um, most of those guides should be in the guide section because that's where all the, the updated, the modern ones were. Right. Well, it looks like someone just made a update. I know. I, I noticed that. <laughs> uh, oh, the libvert version. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. This is probably like Sandro or someone. No, uh, update bind HA proxy guide links. Okay. Um, because I mean, the, the problem is if they're there and you're in the documentation, yeah. you're not going to yeah. find them if you're. So we need the information in one place. Yeah. And maybe we take it to the other meeting that we shut down all content in here and move it onto the website if it's going to sort of persist. Yeah. Well, because this um, has all been rewritten. This one I wrote, and that one's that's old, old. Uh, vSphere Terraform. Um, yeah, actually, these shouldn't have been updated. What we should have done is pulled them a while back, because right. that's part of the stuff that was rewritten and moved over um, to the work that Mike did. Yeah. Um, and then now all on our website. Right. So let's do that then. Let's bring this to the greater group that we limit guides and we limit this repo to just discussions and pull requests and um, issues related to the code base itself yep. or the, the release itself. And then we modify the README to go to um, the docs. The docs. Now, what about known issues? Because Vadim is probably going to ask about that. Do we keep known issues and FAQ I, here, or do we do them? At, well, I think he was on the website now, right? Yeah, I, I did copy the FAQ onto the website, but again, known issues. Again, I would move. Yeah, this should literally put everybody over to the docs. The docs should right. be where all the information is. I mean, part of the reason of updating the documentation technology is it's now trivial to update. Right. It's a markdown yeah. file. It's trivial yeah. to update. So I, I would say that that is the single source of information. And this is purely for discussing changes, raising issues, as, as we've highlighted in our sort of community guidelines that this is a place where you talk about changes and potential bugs um, and that's the purpose of this repo now yeah. information is on the website and this is a sort of a a way of managing issues and and bugs it's so and I'm, as i scroll down i'm seeing that it's like learn more they like way down the page they talk about like what you can do with it uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, um, is there anything here that should stay other than this first paragraph? And then it should just link to the website, or should it have like a list of links for these things, like? getting started I, I think we just put them to website because that's all in the website okay. um okay. then if, if we want to reorganize a website this doesn't get left behind um i okay. think yeah. there okay. is stuff then, that's not yeah brian excuse me uh aren't you really saying that uh there is no use for this repo well it, like it, 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 should, it should all we should really close this one down 
Well, no, th well, for co for content, it shouldn't have any content, but this is our planning repo. So this repo okay. is purely for the discussions and the issues. Well, let me ask you this though. Is there a reason why we wouldn't in the, the OKD.io repo have a, um, a uh, tags for issues to separate out website versus code. I, I actually think and just move everything there. Right. I think it's it's actually quite good to have a planning repo, okay. because then if you raise an issue in OKD.io, it's a bug on the documentation. Mm -hmm. We've got nowhere because most of the upstream, most of the content comes from upstream repo. So if you want to raise a bug on OKD. Other than Vadim's installer repo, there's nowhere to put that bug. Or if you want to have a discussion around, say, the work that we're doing on, on say, getting operators updated and things like that, there's nowhere we can have that discussion. And this repo is that purpose. So I, I think having this as not for content, but to do the manage the discussions, the bug requests for OKD, I think that's a good use. Okay. Um, if we were a bit more formal, we'd use those issues and put a Zen Hub or something on the front of it, and this would then be our task tracking as well, but um, as we're not that, that sort of formal here, then okay. we just need the discussions and the, the issues. Features. Now, the one, the one hitch with this repo is that in essence, then it means that we will continue to, any community contributions will continue to be at the um, uh, so this this one because it's under OpenShift slash Red Hat control, none of us can contribute to this directly. It all has to get approved by either Christian or Vadim. Or I think that's it. I think those are the only two people that are actual. Um, but but isn't there a long term in the other meeting to actually bring up and go to GitLab and and move out of the OpenShift orgs? There, there, there is. There is. Yeah. yeah. Now I and I actually I've, I actually created a ticket with Diane's name on it to look at the legal and security. Um, to check with legal and security at Red Hat to see if that's okay. So um, ideally, we we want to shut this one down. We want to shut the OKD.io down, and right. move them both to the new Git the OKD org, wherever that's going to end up living. Sure. Um, that's the way I would see it going, and then community members can then be admin. Um, All right. Yeah, that's that makes sense. So let's run this by the main group then. Uh, and see where we go from there, see if anyone has any concerns about doing that. Um, okay, so, because, so just yeah. to summarize, Jamie, then our proposal is to move the content to OKD.io and leave the discussions and issues uh, here. Yeah. Okay, yep. uh, yep. all subject to everything moving. Right, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yep, thank you for summarizing. All right, so next up is, uh, let me find this here. Um, da, 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 create, build a code of conduct. Um, Michael isn't here to respond on the status of the code of conduct. Uh, Driti, survey. Uh, uh, okay, hi, Jim. I'll just give me a second, let me fix my uh, earphone. One second. Sure. Okay, uh, I'm going to share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Uh, so th uh, this is the user survey that I have created. Uh, I'm going to share it with um, you and everyone else so that, you know, for feedback. Um, but how does this look? I have compiled, or this was the question, um, this is about eight eight questions over here. Mm -hmm. um, this was suggested by somebody in the last um, uh, uh, meeting. Uh, what version of OKD are you using? Although it's not in, in this uh, this discussion, 
but it was suggested last time so i added it over here so the questions are what version of okd are you using what is the biggest challenge you face using okd today what which critical features do you need that are not available in okd today uh, how many people in your company are using okd again this question is not posted here but somebody mentioned it in the last meeting so i added it over here uh, well, which option... let me let me ask you something about the before you move on let me ask you yeah. about that one um and maybe should we maybe ex, you know and i can i can comment on this as well but yeah. should we maybe um what what do we mean by using it like developing on it administering it like um we might want to clarify like like what we mean by using it Okay. Or write the sentence in such a way that that it's, uh, you know. And and I, and I think the other thing is, I'm, sorry, I missed the, the first couple of questions. Um, yeah. Are, are we asking, are you using it in a business or personal context? Okay. Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. Because obviously that that question doesn't make sense, and what we don't want to do is we we, we don't want people to think, oh, you only want business users here. So okay. home home lab is a valid use, and we want to just sort of make them feel that yeah, that this question is for them as well. Mm, okay. Yeah. And you should also think about uh, multiple versions because people can be easily using, uh, you know, like at the moment four seven four eight. Ah, okay. So I should make this a checkbox, right? Checkboxes, yeah. Uh, and and make it plural for the question. Yeah. And now, do you want to? Is it possible that somebody is just in for interest and they're not actually using it, but you know, you want to get what are they interested in? Uh, as in, what are they interested in? As in, uh... well, I guess my question is: Is the audience only people that are currently using OKD, or is it also people that would be interested? In well, using let's it? target. Let's for this target people who are currently using it, assuming that's because. I think we can assume that the only people that are going to take the time are people that are currently using. Good. I would clarify it over here. We're right. Currently using it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Moving on, the other questions are: Which optional operators are you using now? This was suggested by Vadim. Mm -hmm. uh, which operators are you lacking? Uh, those two questions. So I reframed it like which operators are currently missing and are needed. Maybe I need to reframe it in a better way. This particular. Um, again, how I, helpful uh, is? Yeah. Okay, oh, so sorry. Just on that one, I think what we're actually asking is what OCP operators would you like on OKD? Because. Uh, I, uh, that's a very yeah. open question in terms of what operators are missing. Well, and, so that's an interesting question. Do we anticipate, and this is more, I guess, for the larger group, do we ever anticipate adding content uh, like operators that are not default in OCP? In other words, do we ever anticipate adding operators, default operators that go beyond what OCP has filtered down to OKD. Sure, I would say why not? I mean, operator is a Kubernetes term, not an OCP term. Yeah, but I, I, I think the, the question comes down to, we already have the community hub, the operator hub operators, they're already available. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What we true. don't have are the Red Hat provided private catalog and yeah. marketplace catalog. And granted, that's an opinionated question because we, Obviously, us here are aware of the fact that there's been a delay on that. Yes, but 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 I think that's the question that I think Vadim was probably asking mm -hmm. in terms of which Red Hat operators. Um, okay, which Red Hat operators? Because, I mean, I, do we actually want to open the question up to the... Okay, so how about two questions then? Okay. Like that that one, which is the main question, and then sort of an open-ended, uh, any other operators? Okay. Okay, okay. 
Okay. By the way, there's, I don't know if folks saw the discussion, I'll just mention here. As a matter of fact, I need to log into the issue and comment because I mentioned that I wouldn't, I just haven't had a chance yet. But um, last week, someone pointed out that um, they found the error as to why uh, it's a fluent D and journaling issue as to why the logging operator isn't available yet. And the response from the person at Red Hat will, was, well, eventually the versions um, will sync up uh, and, you know, then we'll be able to release the logging operator for OKD. Um, obviously, that's a less than uh, desirable uh, uh, response. Yeah, once the journal, uh, blah, blah, blah. yeah, so basically it's the way the journal uh, journaling is being done. There's an older version on RCOS, uh, and because FCOS is a newer version of Fedora, and there's the newer journaling, that that's yeah. an error that's holding it up. So I'm going to respond to that thread as well, and if other folks want to mind, um, that would be helpful, because if we could get OpenShift logging in there, that would be very helpful. Anyway, a little bit of a diversion, but I wanted to make sure folks were aware of that. Okay. So um, coming back to this, um, after this, there's a question for OKD documentation. How helpful is official OKD documentation for achieving your goals? Uh, can we add any other question or should we reframe this question? Um, How about the community I, documentation? I, I was going to say, I, I don't think the mem any member of the public may be able to differentiate between official and community documentation. Right. right. We could just say documentation because yeah. ultimately, yeah, you know, if something's missing upstream, then we can mention it to Michael or someone else. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other documentation related questions or, um, you know, mm. we want to keep it short, uh, the questions anyway. So. I could well could we uh, add a question where that's open ended about their response? Uh, so in other words, a question after that that would be like, um, can you elaborate on your response to the question above, or you know something like that, so that we can uh, okay. if they say that it's a two, you know why is it a two? What is it that's lacking? in the documentation. Yep. Um, another question that follows on from the discussion we had last meeting, um, is it worth asking if anybody uses CRC or for OKD? Get, getting thoughts on that. That's probably, I, I'm, we have to be careful that we don't go like, I think above like 10 questions or whatever. But, yeah, yeah, um, I'm aware of that. <laughs> Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight questions we have. So, do we want to do one about CRC? Do we want to take up the survey space with CRC? I, I don't know. It, it's just obviously one of the the goals that we had for that subtask is to work out if anyone's actually using it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what would the question be like? Um, uh, have you, are you interested in using code ready? Have you, or will you be using code ready containers or something like that? I don't know. Brian, what do you think? Bruce? Yeah, I guess that, that is sort of two separate things, isn't it? Uh, one question is, do we want to know if people have been using it? Uh, and, uh, that's sort of interesting, but it doesn't really uh, affect what we do in the future, which is what you're interested in. Uh, I, I think the, the question is, do you use? Because if, if we if it turns out that we've got a community that are actively using it, then it suggests but, that we have to keep keep maintaining it. If, yeah, but if, it doesn't tell us if they want to use it, but they haven't been because of right. Lack so that of it being updated it's exactly. Okay. So for the C, from the CRC side. What would be most useful is, uh, well, okay, one, are you using it? And two, if not, 
uh, how would you want it changed so that it would be useful to you, or something like that? Okay. I mean, what, what would make it useful? What would make you use it? I mean, we we could turn it around and say, and ask more about a a laptop install. And so without using any product or without talking about code ready containers, it's like right. would, small footprint would, would, installation or something like that. Yeah, it's like if you could run a a personal copy on your laptop, would that would you find that useful? Or, or a cut down version on your laptop, would you would you use that? Or something something along those lines, just so we can have an information and then just ask. Yeah. What's the memory footprint of your laptop? 8, right. 16, 32, 64 gig. And just right. see what people are willing to tick. Because that, that would. Uh, I don't know. Well, yeah, can we do conditional questions? In other words, if you say no, then you pop up another question to ask for explanation. I am going to check out that. But if, let's say that if yes, we can do that. Um, I'll find that out. I don't know as of now. Yeah, I, I don't know either. Oh. But I've seen it in uh, some other Google Forms, so let me find that out. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, just, so, one, yeah. so just one question. At the very, very top, you say we're collecting emails. Are we GDPR compliant? Um, That's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> And I know there's a, there's a California. Being a U.S. citizen, I, I'm not that familiar. With well, there's the Californian equivalent of that, and I can't remember what the acronym for that one is, but that, that that's the same about collecting personal information. Right. right. So we make it anonymous. Well, if we collect it, you're meant to say what you're using it for. You right. have to say why you're collecting and what you use, okay. what you're going to use it for. How about at the how about at the here's what I've seen is at the bottom saying if you would like us to reach out to you to discuss your responses, please leave your email. That okay. makes it okay. optional for them and it states what we would use it for. And yeah. we would say something like we won't share it with anyone else. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is great. Okay. Yeah. Um, and 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 after that, one question for the community: uh, Do you think we should add, add this over here? What could we do to make the OKD community more welcoming? Or do we need I this? So. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, should I add some? Add one more? Uh, like any additional comments? Uh, a question like that. Um. No? Yeah, I think so, because that's an optional thing. And if someone doesn't, you know, if they don't have anything else to say, it's not like it's an extra question or anything. Like that. Okay. And I think that puts us at 10, doesn't it? Yeah. Unless we have those sub questions. Right, right. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. This this was good discussion, you know. I'm gonna uh, work on this and I'm gonna let you know. Excellent. Thank you so That's much great. for this. This is this is great. Um. So moving ahead, can I talk about the Twitter thing? That uh, yeah, because I realize it's probably really late at night for you, and we are eternally grateful that you are sharing your time with us this late at night. That's very wonderful of you, and it's very much. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so we we have a Twitter account, and I hope you know that. Um, we I create um, so I talked to um, Diane, and she suggested this handle okd underscore io, and um, this is the uh, this is the profile. I'll share it. Um, we sent our first tweet, and uh, the your question was about how to. Uh, you know, giving the Twitter access to others. So I think I'm going to, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I shared all the password and everything with Diane already, but I saw something like this. So maybe, uh, um, you know, we could share this um, 
this through tweet deck oh interesting yeah i'm not familiar with it even i am not but uh, i saw this over here in the settings so i thought that um, you know do that okay yeah i think that's worth checking out for sure so All let right. me start with diane and then we can uh, i'll share it with diane and then uh, we can take it from there who else to add that's awesome Okay. All right. Any questions on the Twitter stuff? Any comments on the Twitter stuff? Who, who's actually monitoring that on a daily basis if you get a question? Is there somebody that gets notified or? It's just me for now. Just you. Okay. Yeah. You know what and you might want to, oh, go ahead, Brian. Sorry. I thought you were. I was going to say, and you're, you're happy doing that. Yeah. Yeah. For now. Yes. It's, it's not, not, not a difficult job, but. So one thing that we might, we might want to do is start following others because then you build up the grid, the social yeah. grid basically. So um, maybe start following back people, not just anyone who follows, but you know, um, right, exactly like the SIG, maybe follow some of us, um, follow other Kubernetes based um, okay. Twitter handles, other GitOps. Twitter handles, things like that. Yes, GitOps based Twitter handle. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kubernetes and GitOps. Okay. Uh, so they have a Fedora suggestion as well. Oh, so yeah. Fedora mm -hmm. Core OS, yep. that would be a good one as well. Yep. Okay. Cool. cool. All right. Thank you for Let's this. See. Thank you so much. Let's see what we got next on the agenda here. We're actually going longer than I thought we would. Um, to do that was the survey new business Twitter access. We did that, and that's actually about it. Um, issues, issues. Oh yes, issues. Sorry, I'm I'm not used to it yet. Obviously. <laughs> um, so let's go to uh, issue. You know, new there's issues. There's one. There's one I want to close off. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, update the group charter is in there. Gather legal input. I put these in like just a bit ago. Um, yeah. So there's, a, there's the one that Alexandro, uh, Sandro yeah. about the security and should we have a section? We sort of said we're mm -hmm. going to defer that to us. Yeah. So that's probably one that we need to talk about whether this meeting or the next one. And the one I actually want to close off is the last one on the list, the modification required for inclusive language. I yep. put a comment in there. Um, we've got 66 instances of the word master, which okay. gets flagged by the inclusive tool. Um, and they're all down to links to other repos. And I've listed the one, two, three, four, five repos that we have links to that have okay. their primary branch called master. And then the main use is obviously OKD and OpenShift, the control plane, are on master nodes. Yeah. So master appears mostly in the guides where we talk about installing because master node is what the product uses, which obviously OKD then uses. Right. So yeah, we can't I, really do an install guide without using the word master. Yeah, I noticed yeah. Uh, it's, it's in, in the console as well. There's several places that talks about uh, yep. you know, master nodes. Yeah. So there's nothing in there that is inflammatory or people could take offense to in terms of our content. But there's the 66 cases that are, were flagged by the tool and they're all legitimate uses. So I think we can close this issue off. Um, I did look at could we make this part of the publishing pipeline, but the issue comes then it's it's a subjective dis decision there is not a sort of yes or no case because like with these 66 you have to look at it and say is this offensive is this bad use of language and in all of these there's a there's a valid use that either the other git repos are going to have to rebrand their default or we're going to have to get the product to remove what they call the master nodes or the control plane nodes. So um, I'm proposing that we close this issue with no further action needed. All right. What do other folks think? 
Well, I guess, okay, I'm, I'm totally happy with that. Uh, my question is, do we need Diane's blessing uh, coming from the Red Hat uh, side of things? Probably a good idea, since, since they are the sponsor of this. Yeah, that's a good point. What's Diane's D. Muller 2001? D. Muller, right, yep. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we just assign her to the ticket and then put a, uh, or add her to the ticket and then if, for a last comment, put, you know, Diane, will you? Right, but as I say, you've got my vote. Right. Anyone else on the call have any thoughts on this? I put a comment in asking Diane. Okay. Anyone else have any thoughts? All right. Do we have anything else on the agenda? Did you want to talk about that, Sandro, or put that up to two weeks' time? Uh, so the, the thing about that one is that um, the main group decided that we'd want to get a community, a security liaison or someone to sort of to, to speak about that. And we did talk about this group publishing some security information. I think that's a little bit, I think we should wait until after the holidays to take that one on. Okay. Um, in essence, what we're going to want to do is um, we have those links that were in the main meeting folks threw in links. We're going to want to define some sort of process and get a volunteer to um, be sort of the person to scan those and make sure that, you know, we haven't missed anything or add anything or, you know, whatever. Um, I'm kind of maxed out in terms of time. Uh, if anyone else wants to volunteer to assemble a security page based on the content of the main meeting uh, from last week where folks threw in links to different things. Yeah, my you sense know, is then. a lot of people are kind of maxed out right now in terms of time. Yeah. So let's, let's take this up um, uh, in December. Uh, and we'll we'll circle round and and um, you know basically we need a web page that puts all those links in a nice coherent way with some explanation and then provides like a contact um, or it, actually a description of if you, if you think you have a security issue um, you know reach out to X email which we don't really have a dedicated email right now uh, for this stuff that goes to the group right. But at the end of the day, I think it's going to have to go to a Red Hatter because we, other than cooking an installer, everything else yeah. is... But what if it's something with the installer? Then it has to go to Red Hat and then down to the Dean's repay. Who's still a Red Hatter. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah, that's true. All right. Is there anything else that we want to talk about? No. All right. Me. Well, I am going to uh, stop recording here, and I appreciate everyone coming for the meeting. A lot of great work uh, has been coming out of these meetings. Diane actually said as much um, in conversation recently. Stop recording. And.